Well, g'day guys, welcome back to another episode and the first one out here on the deep blue yonder. Out here with the old boy and we're not doing anything too fancy, not chasing kings or snapper. We're having a good old flatty bash. It's good fun and probably the easiest way to get a good bag of fish you could ask for. Anyways, we'll roll the intro and we'll get into it. Okay, so as per usual, this is going to be a pretty deep dive into the technique and the fish we're chasing. If you want to skip forward to the fishing action, you can go to this time here. I've also got a underwater camera, which I'm going to be trying out later. So hopefully we pick up some pretty cool footage with that. But as for what we're doing, we're chasing two types of flathead, which is the Southern Sand and Tiger. And if you're in New South Wales, there's a fair chance you can get both straight off the coast from where you are. Um, if you're up north, it might turn into the Northern Sand Flathead. But what we found for chasing both is generally you're looking for about 30 to 40, 50 metres of water. Um, and the old boy is on. Under not a bad one, it looks like. But yeah, what do you reckon? Nice size. You beauty. So as I was saying, for us the sweet spot's around 40, 50 metres of water. Um, doing a bit of research last night, it seems the tigers are generally a deeper water fish. The southern sands are a bit closer in, but about 40 metres we get a good mix. So a sounder and chart is pretty handy, especially for plotting where you find good grounds are. And the fish do move around a bit. Right, as for the gear, I'll start down the rig end and what I'll do is I'll actually show how to make this rig at the end of the video as well. But we've just got a twisted dropper Paternoster rig. So, and here we go, we've got a double header of tigers. And they're pretty nice sized tigers. There you go, good start to the day and it's absolutely perfect conditions out here. Anyways, back onto the rig. So what we've got down the bottom is a eight ounce snapper lead. So you're gonna have to change these on the day, depending on how fast the current's going and what depth you're fishing. And that's just on a little loop, so you can change those out. Again, I'll show this in how to make this a bit later. A twisted dropper down to a 3.0 wide gape hook. Another twisted dropper. And then I just put a swivel and that's connected to my wind on leader. So this, the trace here is 50 pounds and that's more than enough for flathead. But what you want is a bit of stiffness in your line so it's going to hold your baits out and not get twisted up. Got the wind on's 50 pound as well and then I've got 30 pound braid. And I just like going that kind of lighter braid so that there's less drag on the current and things like that. This is the old faithful Slammer 3 5500 and then this is on a Penn Ocean Assassin. This is a PE 2 to 5 so around about you know a 40 pound rod. And there you go that is the rig that does the damage. I'll link down in the description where I've gotten all this gear from the dudes down at Boss Outdoor as well. It won't be the Slammer 3, it'll be the new Slammer 4. Okay, as for baits, look, they'll eat a whole bunch of stuff. What I've got here is some brined pilchards, which I've done myself, and I'll do a video very short into the future of how to brine them. 
you can see they stay nice and tough and I've also got some brined uh, Australian salmon squid also goes good you want to stick away from um, your softer baits because a they're just going to get picked off straight away and as well as when you bring flatty on board they're going to flick their heads around and throw mess all over your boat but with the pillies we've just cut them in half and because they are a little bit softer like to kind of go through either the eye or down by the base of the tail and then just going to go in and out the one side just like that that'll do it with the salmon i just like to go through the once i'm just going to sharpen that up a little bit I just like to go through the once, right up near the tip, and just making sure you've got a nice hook point exposure there. There you go. Get in on the action. And then, simple as dropping straight down to the bottom. Again, a lighter line is gonna allow you to use a lighter sinker as well. It's going to be less affected by the drift in that and what you'll see out the back there is actually a drift parachute or sea anchor and it is a pretty fast drift today for no wind absolutely perfect day but it was a fast drift so we've put the anchor out just to slow us down a bit and of course flathead live right on the bottom so you just want to keep in constant contact with it. So as you're drifting along, oh, there's a bit of a bite. Oh, missed him. But as you're drifting along, your sinker may rise up if it's a little bit too light. And if that's the case, you just want to keep flicking your bail arm over, get it right back to the bottom where the fish are. There's a couple little touches. And yeah, you kind of, sometimes there's a lot of smaller fish around, so you are waiting for those better bites. And just constantly feeding that line until you've got too much out and your sink is just constantly raising off the bottom too much. There we go, got one. And it feels like not a bad one. So it's obviously not the most sporting fishing. You're just winching them up. If you do get a really big one, you do kind of got to pause your wines just to let him shake his head around a bit if he wants to. But otherwise, you're just getting them up as quick as possible. What have we got? Is he illegal? He'll be illegal. So there we go. There is. See if I can give you a bit better look without spiking myself. But that is a tiger flathead. You can just tell by the coloration. They've got those orange blotches. The sand flathead are a bit more like a dusky flathead color that's been living on sand. But there we go. What you're definitely going to want to get if you're flatty bashing is one of these, a D hooker or a flatty flipper. So all you do is hook that over the hook. You're going to keep the line tight using the end of your rod and holding on to the end. And then you're just going to flip it over. Oop. Just like that. And he's in the ice slurry. Beautiful. So the old boy's on again. And all we've got is tigers so far. Hopefully we can show you a sand flathead, but you can't complain with tigers. The tigers do get a bit bigger. They get up to about 70 centimeters. And I was reading last night, the biggest the sand flatties get is about 50. That's a really good sand flathead. But, and that is a little tiger. 
And so the minimum size is pretty small for these guys. I believe it is 32 centimeters. 33. 33, there you go. So he would be pushing it, but he can probably go back. It's early days and we're getting lots of bites and good quality fish. So they're 33 for each species and they have a combined bag limit of 10 per person. So ideally we're going to get 20 flathead today and stock up the freezer. What I will do also is we'll do a flathead filleting video because I reckon the old boys methods up there with the best I've seen and it's also pretty unique but I think I'll make that a separate video so that this one's not too long. There you go, 20 flathead, that is the plan. And so what you'll find with flatty bashing is that the fish do school up. Um, the best way to find them is just to find the right depth that you want to work and then just cut the motor, go for a drift. It's pretty simple. If you're not finding any fish around, try different dips, go up and down the coast a little bit till you find them and then what you can just keep doing is going back over that same drift. What we've also found is that the edges of reef is usually pretty productive. So if you can find an isolated little patch of reef and drift over that, there's a fair chance that there could be some flatty around. You never know, you might pick up a reefy as well, like a snapper or a mully. And it's pretty common also to get gurned, flatty bashing and if you're lucky you'll pick up a gummy shark which would be pretty cool if we could get that happening today anyways we've moved off our patch so we're just going to motor back over and do this drift again there we go that feels like a pretty damn good one something else who knows might be one of them rock cod just with its mouth open what do we have a double header of tigers uh, one oh they're both legal we'll keep that little one Oh boy, he's getting a bit of action as well. Chuck him back. This other one though, he's alright. He's in the esky. And this one, he's lassoed himself as well. Here we go. The boys are on. And so you can catch flatties like this year round as well, but the warmer months are better. So, summertime before that nor'easter comes up, get out flatty bashing, get a good feed. And another tiger. Hopefully we get a sandy just to show you. But they both taste just as good. Do you prefer one over the other? No, they taste the same. Oh, well. no. They're both top notch. Oh. There's another one that feels like quite a, a very nice one. What do we have here? That doesn't, could be a double header. That has got a fair bit of weight for a snapper. We might even have a reef species here. We'll see, we'll see. 
because that's actually putting up a bit of a fight. And while flatty bashing isn't the most uh, sporting experience in terms of fight, it is pretty enjoyable not knowing what you've got and what you're going to pull out of the blue. And note we've got a double header of two very nice sized tigers. Woo! There we go. Jackpot. Jackpot. There we go, there is another ripper. If it's a flatty, it's gonna be a good one. A bit of colour here soon. What do we have? Yes, it is a very nice tiger. Oh. There we go, even better than the last one. Whoa. That is, yeah, we'll put him up here, give you a look. That is a hooter of a tiger flatty. There you go, non-stop action, which is what you want flatty bashing. Yeah. It is a good time. Join for a second one. Yeah. It is good fun and you can get the tastiest fish and a lot of them. There we go. There we go. One keeper, one little one. Oh, it is a Sandy? Yeah. There you go. With the tiger for comparison here, just put them down on top of the thing for us. So there we go, there's... So we've got a Sandy here. We can just see they've got a... Uh, Kind of a lack of orange spots. Very similar looking. But that's the sandy there, that's the tiger. Into him. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Into a good one. So we are over a little bit of thump to it. Yeah. So we are over a little bit of reef here too, so it makes things interesting. It's either gonna be a good flatty or possibly a moong snapper. You do get gurned but they're a bit like just a regular size flatty in terms of fight. What do we have? Mm. Alright, we got a flat dog. A big old tiger. Oh, yeah. There we go. Another ripper. Chuck and bait everywhere. That is a big old sandy. Little 
bumps, where's the big one? And that's what you need to do. You just need to wade through those smaller bites and wait for that bigger bump. This should be another good size flathead. Yeah, another decent tiger. Well guys, it was about now. I was gonna show off some awesome underwater footage Put a go fish cam on the rig, sent it down, got a few fish, checked the footage on my phone, was looking at Schmicko, and then I've been snipped off up at the braid, and that's likely due to a leather jacket down there. Sometimes they are an absolute plague and very inquisitive, and they'll just come and check out your rig, and they've got very sharp teeth, so you'll lose rig after rig. If they are around, you just gotta move around and try and get away from them. But that is an absolute bugger. 200 buckers. Catch you later. I'm more devastated about the footage, really, because it was looking really good. Anyways, just means I'll have to get another one and come out and do it again. We've bagged out anyways, and that only took us a couple of hours. So there's our 20 fish. What I'm going to do now is go home and shoot a flatty filleting video because I reckon it's probably the best filleting technique that there is out there and I've checked out a lot of them online. This one's the best. So that's going to be a separate video. Um, depending on how long this one is as well, I'll go home and film a um, how to tie the twisted dropper rig as well, but it might be a separate video too. Could be now, otherwise I'll see you next time. Make sure to check out the Flatty Filleton vid because it's going to be a ripper. Peace.